Imports. Today we're working on this beautiful Knob T G25. Today we are replacing this raw water impeller. The purpose of this is to pull the water out of the river or the lake or whatever body you're in to push it through the motor, through the heat exchanger, through the exhaust to be able to cool everything down. Keep it running, keep it running great. This is recommended by Pleasure Craft Marine, the specific engine manufacturer, to re be replaced every year or every hundred hours, depending on which comes first. Uh, we do see these fail based off time. Uh, so, one of those things where if you feel like, oh, I didn't run the boat very much last year, it's cheap insurance, go ahead and just have it replaced or replace it anyway. Uh, today, we're going to walk through the steps of how to get that job done. To start with, let's discuss the tools that are going to be needed to do the job. To start with, you're going to need a half inch drive of some sort. You can use a adapter for half inch on a 3 8 breaker bar, as I use, so it fits in the area well. You can use a half inch drive ratchet, half inch drive breaker bar. All you need to know is that you need it to be a half inch drive square drive, just like you would use in a socket. On top of that, you will need a 10 millimeter socket. I find a stubby socket on a short extension tends to work the best. Um, some applications have a exhaust right behind the raw water pump that makes it so you need to be a very specific length. That's why this setup works really well. Other applications such as some of the Supreme boats and Centurion boats have more space there so you can use a longer extension. It doesn't make a big difference. The Nautiques have an exhaust right behind the pulley so aim for about this length. That works well, of course, with the matching ratchet and plenty of lighting as you are underneath the back of the deck. One trick to use is if you remove the panel uh, in, for better access, all you need is a Phillips bit. You can use a screwdriver, you can use a screw gun. Um, they're just screws into plastic, so don't send them too hard, but they tend to work. Of course, I have more lighting. You'll want to start with a raw water impeller kit. If you get one from Pleasure Craft uh, or, an, or a dealer, this is the part number that is used in most of the naturally aspirated Pleasure Craft engines. Kit comes great. Comes with a raw water impeller. Comes with replacement o-ring and replacement little o-rings. Those little o-rings don't usually matter. The big o-ring more so. So get yourself one of those kits and some sort of lubricant. I like to use WD-40. You can use pretty much any lubricant. That's just to protect the fresh raw water impeller uh, that you just put in until it sucks up water for the first time. Now we're in the boat, so first thing we'll want to do is open up our rear lockers and our engine bay. Of course, every boat's going to be set up a little bit differently, so your lockers may be different, how you access your engine bay may be different. This is going to be fairly standard for the Nautiques. You open your side lockers, you open your engine bay. Engine bay doesn't have to be open, but it gives you some better lighting. You'll want to then remove your engine panel. Be careful to set it where you're not going to damage anything. And that gets you access to the side of the engine. Your raw water pump is on the port side of the boat around the rear of the motor or the pulley side of the motor at the bottom corner. Some applications, uh, dependent on age and application, will put it in a different position. I've seen some that are on the starboard side bottom corner, and I've seen some that are on the port side upper corner. But Pleasure Craft, on most of their current engine lines, puts it down low on the port side. Once you're in this position, you have two options. You can either reach around the motor from above or from the side and essentially hug the motor while you work on it. And in some applications that's doable, 
and you can get the job done. Other applications, there's not quite enough room. Other than that, you can go ahead and remove your other panels. You have three screws in the front. They screw right into the front side of the track, right into the plastic board. They're little black head, coarse thread, tapered screws. Dependent on year, some have a piece of track screwed in the back that the board sits in. Others will have an L bracket with more screws holding them in. This one has an L bracket that will have three more screws that hold it down to the back of the deck. In some applications, you will have a bracket with a grease fitting or potentially your fuel water separator canister screwed to that panel. In that case, you can either unscrew them as I did it this time, or sometimes you can rotate the panel and set it in between the engine and the framework without having to remove those. Use your discretion. After you get that panel out of the way, you will have access that looks something like this. Nice wide open area. After you crawl down here, you are looking for two things. You are looking for the raw water pump and the tensioner. At this point, we are laying in the port locker, looking at the pulley side of our engine. You will take your square drive tool and put it in the end of the idler pulley. Find the angle that works best for you to be able to grab and pull toward the port outside of the boat. Reach with your other hand and slide the belt off the alternator pulley. Then you can just let the whole thing relax. Now we're at the stage of removing the raw water pump. Of course, we're not going to be removing the whole assembly, but we'll be removing the outer portion with the pulley and the shaft. We'll go ahead and finish pulling the belt away from the raw water pulley just enough to give us some room. You see we have these three holes in the face of the pulley. You will rotate it until two of those holes are level at the top with one hole pointing straight down. You always want to rotate this in the clockwise direction. You can take your 10 mil on your little extension and reach into those holes and it becomes a feeling game until you feel where there's a high point back there. That high point is a 10 millimeter bolt. Once you find the 10 millimeter bolts, you'll go ahead and put your socket on them and break them loose. You'll go ahead and repeat that on all three holes for a total of three bolts. After that, you can go ahead and remove your ratchet, and this is where having it on the little extension comes in handy. Go ahead and set the socket back on the bolts and spin them out one at a time. As you're doing that, feel when you start getting a clicking once per rotation. Uh, that's how you know that the bolt is fully disengaged but has not pulled all the way out. You can leave the bolt hanging where it is. Once you have all three of those bolts completely backed out, you can take and rotate the raw water pulley clockwise as you pull outward. Rotating as you pull will keep a load on the raw water impeller and make it so the raw water impeller comes out with the pulley instead of just pulling the pulley out of the impeller itself. Once you have the raw water pump out, you can slide the raw water impeller off the shaft. You see this style just has two flaps. Keep that in mind. Go ahead and pull the large O-ring out of that same face. 
the three small O-rings that I said earlier don't matter much, they go inside these little holes where those bolts index. Their main job is to keep those bolts from disappearing. They are not actually sealing water. They are, as I say, just there to keep the bolts from going away. If those go missing, yes, absolutely go ahead and replace them. Or if they appear to have damage, go ahead and replace them. But this time, we'll go ahead and take our new large O-ring from our kit, install it in the raw water impeller housing, and slide on our new raw water impeller. Simple as that. From there, keep in mind, there is a top point and a bottom point on this housing. Where you find the hole drilled in the housing is the bottommost point when it's all bolted together. Some of them will have a sticker telling you where the top is. Like with this one, if that sticker is not there, just make sure to put the weep hole at the bottom. Once we come back down, we're ready to install. First thing I always want to make sure to do is take your lubricant. Make sure you're not getting it on the pulley surface or on the serpentine belt. You'll also want to try and make sure you're not getting it on your upholstery. So if you come back here in the engine bay, you can usually find a good area to lubricate without making a mess of anything valuable. Go ahead and just spray down the raw water impeller on all sides. Spray it down, squeeze some lubricant into it, or wipe on some grease, your call. Like I say, that's just there to protect it on the first couple startups before it actually starts to suck water. Once you're lubricated, we're ready to install. Again, bear in mind top and bottom of the bearing housing. Best practice is to come in with the bottom point of the bearing housing about 90 degrees from the bottom. Line up your raw water impeller against the hole and rotate and push it in. Once the raw water impeller starts to go into place, then the fins are all in the bend that they need to have. You can take it then and just push it all the way into place, like so. If you reach behind, you can feel where the brackets are that the bolts need to line up with. If you hold those in place and rotate the pulley, you can regain your access points. Taking your 10 mil and extension, you can then run them all back in. After you've ran all three bolts back down, you can reinstall your ratchet and give them a quick tighten. All you're looking for is snug, your o-ring will hold tight and will help it seal. You do not need to torque these to a high specification. They only need to be snug. But you can feel when the o-ring collapses and the metal is now touching the metal. After all three of those bolts are tightened with the ratchet, you can then come back Make sure your serpentine belt is against all pulleys correctly. Pull your tension back over and slip it back in place. You will always want to double check that your routing is correct, that you are fully seated in all pulleys. Make sure to run the engine and step back and 
watch the boys to make sure that the belt is sitting in place correctly and not skipping once you have it all reassembled. If your serpentine belt came off far enough that you do not recall how it goes back on, or if you just have any questions or concerns about belt routing, look at the top of your degas bottle or your coolant reservoir, and on the sticker, it'll almost always show you the correct, the correct belt routing. At this time, we will go ahead and start the engine. And make sure that the belt is fully seated. After which, you are now complete and ready to reassemble any panels that you may have removed. If your boat is equipped with a sea strainer such as this, it is always a good practice to go ahead and watch it on the first startup in the water to make sure that it is filling within a second or two with water and that it is not having a long, slow pickup or a lack of pickup whatsoever. So that's the process for replacing a raw water impeller on most current model pleasure craft engines. Uh, be it a ZR7 such as this one, the ZZ6, which is one of the more common ones, or the ZZ5. Uh, go ahead and follow the same procedure. If you have any questions, always feel free to give us a call. I'm Andrew at Desert Valley Power Sports. Thanks for joining.